schedule. And so Camille moved it to 6.30 in order to accommodate for that person's schedule. And then they never ended up being able to join. Good. Yes. One. See, I think she said that one. Oh, yeah, what's up? This is a quieter song, but can you all hear it at all? No. No. Oh. I heard something earlier. I put Alana instead of Cat. What the fuck is wrong with me? I. Ah. Oh, gosh, I need to change that, don't I? <laughs> I changed mine. <laughs> <laughs> murder me daddy <laughs> what is wow is, is that your man. is that what you go by on the streets or like yeah okay we're in the sheets in the sheets oh my god yeah so can we hear in the streets murder daddy i don't hear street. anything yeah that song might just be too quiet to use because like I, i'm at like 40 and y'all can't hear it so <laughs> that's fine can we, this is are you sure backup. that you're you're sharing like normal yeah. He's sharing. Oops, he's sharing. Oh. I hear it. Okay. Yep. Volume. Are we okay? Yeah, that's a good volume. I'm yeah, asking there specifically. Oh. A smidge lower. That is one smidge. I think it'll be okay once we start talking. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Fine. Um. Uh, what's up? I was going to say, can we do the camera thing <laughs> so I can run and grab water and stuff too? Yeah. Yeah, um, if Van, Lady Dame, and Eva could turn off the cameras. Van. <gasps> Lady there Dame. There it is. Eva. There we go. All right. Look at okay. us go. Cool. Is there uh, starting music? anything that we need to go over before I go run and grab water? Um, just, do you guys have any requests for the night? Murder. <laughs> do you want to no. RP out the, the capture of the bitten dude? It doesn't really That's... matter. He's not My... gonna, like, fight back, and Lynn is gonna want to capture him at this point. Okay, I was gonna say, if we don't think it's gonna be an issue, we can just say, hey, come with us. I mean, she's gonna use a magical ability that's gonna look like she's attacking him, but it's gonna be a capture spell. So... Does it look like that? We are live are... on the channel right now. Yeah, I know. We're live with the starting soon. We're not live with like. Oh. No, we're. We're. Our conversation.
I was born Lady Catalafio Rhiannid. I lived in the imperial city of the Cyrodiilic Empire and had a fine life. My siblings and I had all the necessities and trinkets that we could ever desire. My father had the ear of the emperor after all. That's what happened when you were part of the Elder Council. His influence ran deep, as did his pockets. But when you live a life where you're handed everything on a silver platter, and there's little to no consequence for your actions, it was quite easy to lose your morals. What I'm trying to say is that my father was not a nice man. He had no regards for the lower class citizens and treated the servants terribly. And even though I was the oldest child, my opinion on how he handled matters meant little to him, regardless of how much of a fuss I made or what I tried to do to help those less fortunate than me. So, one day I rescinded my family name, told my father to go screw himself, and joined the Fighters Guild. Not necessarily in that order. And that was the day I became Cat Emberheart. In the Fighters Guild, I learned how to fight. I grew strong and skilled, participating in missions that took me many places. But something just seemed off. Yes, I was doing good by taking out bandits and disposing of dangerous creatures. But in the end, being part of the Fighters Guild meant that I was nothing more than a hired sword, and it didn't sit well with me. I worked like this for a couple years, but then I was approached by a man, a recruiter for the Blades, the elite force sworn to protect and serve the Dragonborn. He knew my history, who I really was, and my desire for peace. He promised that by joining them, I would be able to make a difference. So I did, and I've been with them ever since. And yes, I have been able to make a difference in keeping people safe, which is why I'm the one they're sending to the Somerset Isles to keep an eye on the rumors of rebellion. Hello, hi, I am Ragna, or Ragna Heartrender. Are we doing professional type things here? Have I already done this wrong? Okay, anyway, work through it, Ragna. This is fine. I have business in the Isles, so if you know the local Fighters Guild representative, that would be very helpful. Thank you. See, I can be professional. Me and Bashir have been traveling for a while now, and your Somerset is supposed to be beautiful. Much of Tamriel has been beautiful, but there is always more to discover. If I feel down, I can always think that somewhere else in the world is a special place where... <laughs> no, you do not want to hear about that. You want to hear about daring exploits and narrow escapes, yes? Hmm... I have made a bit of a name for myself exploring and guiding others through tombs and lost mines and that sort of thing. But Ragna, you may be saying, are there not curses and Draugr and spiders down there? To which I say, ha 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 ha, yes, but you cannot be cursed as long as you wear blue socks. In a tomb, anyway, red socks for mines. Draugr are just doing their job, same as us. A little stabbing, a little fire, no big deal. And, without spiders, where would we get jelly? Anyway, I was saying something about... Travel? Right. So, here in the Pocket Guide to the Empire, you can see where each of the islands... Wait, where are you going? My name is Aoife Gallert, and my story is a simple one. Well, sort of. As a young girl in Skyrim, I was always tased for being smaller than the others, particularly by one of the bigger girls, Ragna. You might have heard of her. As I grew, I worked hard, training to become stronger and faster. I may have also followed in Ragna's footsteps and joined the Fighters Guild. But it weren't enough. I wanted, nay, I needed real power. So, off into the woods I went searching. And like any good story, I found myself a prince. Now, if this were a fairy tale, that'd be the end of it. But for me, it were only the beginning. Now, I have power and strength. A few new improvements and a pretty title to go along with him. But if you know stories, you know, power always comes with a price. I'm in Somerset now with a task set for me by my prince, 
and ooh, it is a daunting one. If I fail, the price I'll be paying is quite high indeed. So I guess I'd better not screw this up. Well, hello. My name is Altamir Veraza, but you can just call me Alt. I am but a simple wandering performer, a troubadour and illusionist, usually traveling with my troop along the countrysides of Tamriel. Shortly after falling in love and having me, my parents, both brilliant musicians, joined a performing company after meeting in the grand city of Daggerfall. I grew up with the rumble of the wagon calming me to sleep each night. I learned a lot from my parents on the road about music, science, history, performance, and embraced some of the magic I found inside and channeled it into the arts. Illusions and music became my friends, the troupe became our family, and we lived on the road like this for most of my life until my eighth birthday. Then I'm sad to say my parents abandoned me in Daggerfall, never to return from a mysterious midnight departure. I grew up thereafter alone and homeless on the city streets, learning to use my arts to subsist meal to meal and sometimes using trickery to help those less fortunate than the high-browed nobles of the city. Eventually I rejoined the traveling troupe and honed my skills as a multifaceted performer. I yearned to fill my audiences with wonder and inspiration, to lift them up with hope, the same hope I strive to keep alight within myself of reuniting with my parents someday. After all, if a performer does not believe in his own tales, how is he to win over his audience? Recently, life has been tumultuous, to say the least. It's been quite the draining experience, and I find myself caught in a struggle of self-rediscovery. I am now en route to the far Somerset Isles. After a bit of an accident I had, I was told someone there might be able to help me. Who knows where this chapter will lead next? You sleep rather soundly for a murderer. That's good. A clear conscience is necessary for what I am about to propose. You prefer silence, then? As do I. For is silence not the embodiment of Sithis himself? My name is Tyrell Andonius, and I represent the will of the Night Mother. She's been watching you as you kill, admiring as you end life without pity or remorse and she is most pleased. That is why I stand here before you with an offering. An opportunity, if you will, to join our rather unique family. You've heard of the Dark Brotherhood, yes? The remorseless guild of paid assassins and homicidal cutthroats? Well, I can assure you that we are such. But more than anything, we are a union of like-minded individuals. Individuals like you. I see I have your attention. Good. Now listen closely. South of the Imperial City lies a small village called Bell's Gate. There you will find a woman named Schlera Cestius. Kill her, and your initiation into the Dark Brotherhood will be complete. Once your task is finished, you will report to Vicente Valtieri in Chainall to begin your training. And do not worry. He will make himself known to you once you arrive. For now, I must be away. Our mother calls me to Somerset Isles to answer a sacrament. I do hope we meet again soon. for the first time tonight definitely not the <laughs> second time we've been on um it's lovely to to have everybody here thank you so much uh let's just go ahead and jump right in i believe cat is going to be giving our recap yes so last time when we were all together as a group we left the inn that Lynn brought us to, 
to go check out this group that she was checking out on behalf of the Dereni family so she can go back home and see her wife. They were called the Sigic Restoration or something. No, nobody important, just some, not important, but making a lot of trouble for the Dereni family. So we headed on our way, did our own scouting, and it was very quiet, very odd. No guards, didn't see a living being. So our lovely friend Aoife summoned some friends, very violent, very large, and very furry friends who made a distraction at the gate while we busted our way in through a side door. Took a couple tries, but with help of Lynn, we were able to, she was able to pull the iron uh, barred door off of its hinges. Quite interesting. Inside, we saw a couple wood elves, not the high elves we were looking for, Got off on the wrong foot for a bit, and as a gesture of goodwill, they invited us to lunch. We were the lunch. We took care of them, and we took care of them. Let's put it that way. And now we have met up with the original marauders we were looking for. They were easily captured and we will be delivering them alive to the Dereni family. All right. Sorry. Get something real quick. So, you are on the road, heading to, uh, east towards the Dereni estate. Lynn has the captured leader of the bandits tied up. As you all went through the fort during your rest, you did find that the rest of the marauders were in fact dead. Um, I would like to offer, have offered to Lynn before we left. Her original plan was to torch the place and with all the rot that's in there, I would have highly suggested she continue doing that to get rid of all the pestilence. Uh, Lynn smiles. <coughs> I think I agree. And walks in back into the fort, and when she walks out, you can you can hear the cracking of fire as the support beams inside start to catch. I hate to look at a burning building. Don't look. I turn away. Shall we mm, be off? Get then? riddance. Let's go. Yeah, please. Pulls her horse out of the ground. Secures the captured leader to the back of her horse. Gets on and begins riding. Ragnar will get on Bashir and follow. <laughs> um, I think as we are riding off to the Dereni estate and following Lynn, Sweet. I think I'll ride up next to Alt. Okay. Is everything okay? Oh, you're talking to me. Oh, uh... No, I'm yes, talking so... to your horse. Well, no. He's quite temperamental. I don't even know if it's a he or a she, but... We're... They're not very productive. Did you... Are you much of a fighter? Oh, gods, no, no. I perform and try to elude my way out of things like that usually I was just a little concerned because you ran out rather briskly oh oh yes um, you know that feast was quite grotesque um, I have quite a, the sense of smell and well you know smelling those things right up close it was quite strong no I just found it a little odd because you were doing quite well I was very impressed with your magics, but must have gotten a little too strong. But I'm glad to see you're okay. Yes, um, I appreciate your blade work. 
uh, in that last fight. You seem to do well. Uh, you seem to do it like a natural. I've never seen someone fight like that. A decade worth of practice and experience is better than any talent. Hmm. I might disagree with you, but I can't argue with the results. Well, I'm glad you're okay. Of course. Head back up to towards the front of the group. Okay. The journey back is easy. Um, back. The journey to the Dreni State is easy. Uh, the rolling hills of the northern part of Somerset is quite a beautiful sight. The emerald trees and the interspersed with the reds and the purple leaves uh, really just evokes a sense of ancient wonder. You do get to a point, though, where the trees go rather dense. They're not on either side of the road. It's kind of off to your left, but it, it's significantly more wild than anywhere else you've seen before. You pass by with little issue. Arriving at a very grand gate with a very grand number of guard in front. I believe there's six that you can see. Halt! There is no one to be admitted. Yes, that that's me. I'm here. I'm ready to go. You're no one. You said halt! Archers! And two of the people just no, pull wait, back No, wait, wait, wait. Listen. We have something that the members of this estate may be keen to find. If there are any families not doing any business deals right now, please wait for their official word as they move through this difficult time. Lynn, look, yeah, sorry, look at Lynn. I'm just looking towards Lynn, too. So. Lynn, if you would, please. Yes. Actually, I believe you will be interested in this, and she kind of turns her horse a little bit. You see the the man draped over there. His uh, gag in his mouth. He tries to, to yell loudly. This is the, well, I'll say former leader of the Sidic Restoration. It's a bit of a welcoming gift we've brought. Only survivor, too. I believe your problem is almost com is almost finished with. At the mention of Sidric Restoration, all of them have a hand on their weapons. How do we know this isn't just some scheme? You all could be members. We don't know any of you. I mean, y'all are smarter than you look. You can take the prisoner and inspect him for yourself. We do not come with false gifts. Do I have paperwork stating my rank and station? Go. Oh, as as a blade? Sure. I'm not sure if that's a thing or not, but we'll go with it. Sure, yeah. How much respect would I get if I used it? You know that the Dureni family, as you've been told, the Dureni family is a family that is advocating uh, to remain part of the Empire. So, probably gonna help, maybe? I will ride up, like, two steps with my horse. Swords partially out of sheaths? I will be going through my pack and I will be grabbing paperwork to designate my station and my rank as part of the Blades of the Imperial Empire. You see one of Will them, their eyes me? start to glow green, and another one, blue lights appear at their fingertips. And they proceed with caution. I proceed with caution. And I grab, uh, I remove the paperwork from my, um, my bag. Uh, I would probably, like, maybe just, like, take it and tie it around something heavy in my bag, like a torch or something, and like drop it between the two of us. Okay. The one with the glowing eyes walks forward, picks it up, brings it back and hands it to the one that's been speaking to you. Interesting. 
These are hmm. These are either very official forgeries or the real thing. I have better stuff to do than forge documents. Well, that yet remains to be seen. If I may, Lynn gets off of her, uh, reaches into a bag, and again, everyone kind of tenses a little bit. Easy, boys. Easy. And she pulls out a small, like, medallion, walks over, and reaches out to hand it. If you take that inside, you'll get an answer. Yeah, um, do I recognize that? medallion it is a variant of the medallion that you had the one you okay. had um had the dorani crest on it this one has a dorani crest but it also it seems like part of it is morphed into something different interesting okay neat uh interesting all right and he hands it to the person who had the blue glowing fingers. Uh, the glow subsides and they press into their chest. And you see the energy sort of pass through their body. And they turn and bolt with speed that you can't fathom. It just doesn't seem possible. They're gone. He'll be back in a few moments. Please don't make any sudden moves. Very oh. exaggerated, slowly, Ragna is just going to pet Bashir's neck and shoulder. You see them kind of whispering back and forth between them. Uh, one of the archers... Aoife... Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, Eva is going to try and look as... I'm going to try and look as innocent as possible, probably failing miserably, but... You know, batting my eyes, keeping my mouth closed so you don't see the things. After a bit of uh, after a bit of just kind of like getting bored of this, I'll just kind of kind of look up to them and then just start to dance in place for a second. Just most just of them don't move. One of the archers, down. however, does put down their bow. That's fine. Comes forward, takes back its hood, and uh, this is a orange face with bright, bright blonde mane, Khajiit. And he walks over to Ragna. Oh, hi. Hello. It's an interesting companion you have. Ah, yes. Bashir is uh, very smart. Bashir. He gets down and, like, starts just staring directly into Bashir's eyes. And after a moment, shudders, takes a step back. Yeah, he sometimes has that effect on folk. Um, sorry. What? How, if you don't mind me asking, how did you two meet? Oh, he was little baby cub, um, which is still a pretty large cub um, and some very bad people were trying to um, make him be like a mean like fighter uh, and he did not want that and I did not want that for him um, plus we sort of killed them so it seemed um, better to help him out than leave him out in the desert by himself And now we are friends, and he comes with me, and I go with him. And here we are. And now we're meeting you. Isn't that neat? It certainly is something. Yeah, I get that a lot for some reason. Might I ask one further question? Yeah, sure. Forgive me if this is too personal. 
Do people die around you a lot? Okay, no, but yes, but no, everyone has said that is not Ragna's fault. I mean, sometimes it is Ragna's fault, but we have been working through that and I'm trying to get over maybe it not being Ragna's fault all the time. Um, yeah, sort of. Excuse me, that's a very invasive question. I mean, it's sort not of Not every true. day that someone has a shadow ghast sench as a mount. I mean, no offense. He reaches I'm back sorry, a what? A... He does not kill them. Also, all of my friends are still alive somehow. So, really, we are doing pretty well. What is he? What is that goat? He... Mare doesn't know. Uh, you can roll history or religion. Uh, he will reach into a bag and he pulls out uh, a small satchel and kind of unwraps the twine and in it is it looks like some kind of cured meat uh, and he gets down and offers it to Bashir Bashir is his uh, own cat Bashir just like to... almost bites this guy's hands uh, <laughs> as he goes down on it <laughs> uh, I got a 24. On religion or history? Uh, history. Okay. Uh, he backs away and says, Thank you, ghastly one. And he will move back. Shadow ghast creatures generally are very rare. Um, the only ones that you've heard of existing are shadow ghast wolves and shadow ghast senches. Uh, Shadowgast wolves generally only appear in sort of the south eastern south of Riften in Skyrim um, in that kind of quadrant of the Empire uh, by the locals they are considered to be omens of hardship that will be followed by great reward you've heard stories about that a fair amount since it's kind of in North northeastern Cyrodiil. Shadowgast senches you haven't heard as much about, but you do know that the Khajiit treat them with a fearful reverence. Um, the only local tales you've heard is that the one of the suspicions is that the Khajiit believe that they work for their god of death. But you've not seen any like any real like historical texts about that, or it's never really come up. Uh, in fact, the document that you would have read about them uh, postulated that they don't really actually exist. Ragna will um, pet him again, uh, kind of forgetting about <laughs> slow movements, um, and mutter, Bashir is good best boy and has not killed anyone in hardly ever. Um, and just kind of scrub at her face a little bit um, and not really look anyone in the eye. R Ragna, I, I didn't... I'm sorry, I couldn't quite help but taking on what Tyrrell does best and eavesdropping a bit. I'm sorry, was that conversation... Is your uh, elk okay? Is is Panther. Are, I've got the elk. She's got the cat. He is big panther. kitty. Sorry, is your panther okay? I, yes, he is. He is good. He still seems fine, right? Like Yeah, yeah. seems quite happy, actually. Um, yes, he he is okay. Thank you for asking. Okay, I just I think he likes you. Oh, really? Uh, can I go over and try? <laughs> I'm just gonna pet him a little bit. Sure. He loves it. <laughs> sort of Seems rolls his shoulders a little bit back and forth. Quite a large kitty. Very. Bigger than the ones we used in our shows, that's for sure. You're interested in a little bit of more. 
local legends. I can fill you in later, Alt. At this point, the runner returns with the same expeditious haste. Uh, boss said let him in. No questions. <laughs> All right. Uh, we will take him into custody then, if that is acceptable, and we'll transport him not into the family estate. Uh, the rest of you simply follow this road, and welcome to the Dereni house, and the gates will be pushed open. Do I get my documents back? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. he'll hand them back to you. <laughs> I smile at the guard's full teeth. Oh, thank you very much. Very kind of you. Right, I'll nod knows up the archer. Let's hope that uh, that these guests are more hospitable than the last ones. Well, that's really as true. soon as they have the, the bandit leader off of Lynn's horse, she just starts riding. Not at like a fast pace, but just no words. Just continues going. I guess we'll follow her. her. Yeah, oh, yeah, I'm going to follow her. The road up to the Dreni estate is decently long um you see why it took a few minutes even at the speed the runner was moving at uh, it winds back and forth up a small great hillside the trees are much more sparse in this area but nonetheless rich deep emerald colors still pervade this whole area but you can tell that a certain amount has been cleared to maybe prevent anyone from sneaking in you can especially notice that this would be difficult to break into, at least from this angle. Um, definitely a hard job, that would be. As you all approach the Dureni estate, uh, it is magnificent. Built in the large white stone style that you've seen kind of throughout, uh, it seems to be that they are trying to evoke the ancient architecture and styles in their home it is four or five stories tall expansive uh, out to either side hundreds of feet the garden leading in has beautiful flowers uh cat ifa ragna and alt you see ones from skyrim from high rock from cyrodiil uh elsewhere the all over everywhere you've been you you remember oh wait that's native to somehow they're all kept alive here and they form this just beautiful colorful sea in front of you as you arrive to the house uh two high elves approach um in pretty plain clothes uh we will take your mounts if that is okay our stable facilities are the best, I assure you all. Lynn doesn't even get off of her horse. It just kind of dives back into the ground and she just is now there on her feet. That won't be necessary. And I don't need a guide. She'll turn back to the group and say, I'll be back in a bit. I would like a conversation with you. Looking at you, Alt. I I was I was going to ask if there's anything that we should know before meeting with them. They have a lot of power and they've earned it. Don't try to stroke their egos. They don't really enjoy that. Well, uh, that sounds useful. Not that I would ever do that to such a noble that has such a shallow ego. No, um, yes. Thank you. Um, I suppose you will find us if you need us? Yes. Yes, I will. And as she just starts walking into the house, one of them tries to stop her. She just looks. And then keeps walking, and they... Nope. I knew I liked nope. her. Nope. Yeah, also, she gets things done. The also rest alt. of you, having not been here before, um, you will be accompanied. 
Probably for the best. Lead on. We're scary. <laughs> Several more attendants come out of the house, and they each take up reins of your mounts. They mm -hmm. don't get on them, they just guide them. Uh, I tell whoever has elk to be careful. Those uh, antlers of his are quite pointy. And he knows how to use the, them. The larger herbivores of the northern Skyrim Hyok areas are my specialty, so I will make sure that this fine elk is taken care of. Mm-hmm. He begins. You better. <laughs> they escort your mounts away. <laughs> you are led inside. The inside is no less beautiful than the sea of flowers that have led you in here. The house is decorated. It almost seems like the stonework here is inlaid with lines of emerald that sort of guide pathways through the house. Uh, it has a luminescent sheen to it, though, almost as though it is lit. What is your name? Whoever is to whoever, the people that are um, leading us. Of no import? What is the agenda? Are we meeting them immediately? Are we being You brought something rest? very interesting, and the Dureni house, one of the leaders, would like to speak with you. We'll play. Is there any right. complimentary olives to this excursion? There certainly can be. I just didn't... I just assumed that this house is of fine culture and well. I haven't had a good olive since being on the Iliac Bay, so I just figured. Ragna has pulled out her pocket guide and is flipping through it furiously. Um, you know, there is nothing in here that ex explains how gorgeous this place really is. Have you considered talking to the Imperial Geographical Society about the fourth edition, maybe being a little more comprehensive? The interworkings of the Dureni estate are kept the way they are intentionally. Oh, sure. Um, goat. I know we took a short rest, mm -hmm. but how bad do we still look? Before you left, we'll say that you did go down to the shore and scrub the certain smells out of your clothes and armor. Um, you do look a little messy. They don't seem to mind. No one has made any comments about it, though. No yeah, one's given you any offlooks. Yeah, the servants aren't going to. <laughs> as I, uh, if I were to notice this, then as we're kind of like waiting for whoever, I guess like I'd turn around and kind of be like, Oh, I suppose nobles do like their things prim and proper, don't they? Here. And I just like go over to each one of them individually and I'm just kind of like primping them up like with their clothes and I'm casting prestidigitation while I'm doing it. So it's kind of like someone getting like, uh, you know, people ready to see someone really important. Um, I make sure to get, especially Terrell, to like get some of the things off his back. Uh, make sure, goodness, what have you, has this been here this entire time? Goodness gracious. Um, Not sure. And, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna kind of, each one of them, one by one, Tat, Anifa, and Ragna as well. Better than what I was going to do. Thank you, Gold. <laughs> kind of, like, making it smell slightly of, uh, of flowers. As you pass through the halls, you notice many portraits. All of them high elves. The styles... Mm, Cat would likely notice. The styles date back to the Merithic era. This house has been recording and doing things for a very long time. Once you get to the end of the hallway, you're led into a large study. There are This study seems to be the height of the entirety of the house. It's about five stories tall, and bookshelves line it from floor to ceiling. Uh, ladders that seem to be able to move on their own can be seen shifting about... Uh, there's a few servants grabbing books off of shelves, um, some putting them back, but there's only one person simply sitting. 
off to the left side of the room there are two large windows that look out into the fields of the estate and several chairs and in one of them sits a very old high elf the servant that had been guiding you nods says be respectful and walks away well um we never really talked about this part who wants to take the lead i will quietly walk in excuse our intrusion you wish to speak with us i believe it is you that has wished to speak with me i he rises yeah. out of the chair he's quite tall um, six three six four very thin his brilliantly blue and turquoise robes uh, highly adorned with symbols uh, and he has wears several pendants on his neck Ragna will presumably know the proper way of addressing either bowing slightly or um, some form of respect um, she's not really a, in fighter skill anymore so maybe not a salute but <laughs> I will give the appropriate bow to the what I assume to be the head of the house such formality I just grin at him you are welcomed guests I am Vorian Dureni current oh, that is kind. of this home tell me who I have the pleasure of speaking with today Cat Emberheart of the Blades. Altamir Veraza. Hi, I am Ragna Hartrender. Oh, mate, I guess I can go. Hi, I'm Aoife. You can call me the Mistress of the Hunt. A pleasure. Cyril. A pleasure. The blades, which arm are you with? Mare does not know. Cat would know. Uh, that's fair. Um, <laughs> the blades are two primary groups. There are the ones that accompany diplomats and do mostly guard duty. And then there are the agents and the knights that go out into the world and do things for the emperor. So you're a knight. Night, or else I would not be here. I see. How long have you been away? No, no more than a week. I am aware of the current problems. Yes, Muriel was an old friend. He will be missed. These are difficult times. My family was beset upon while I was away brings me joy isn't right I am pleased with the resolution that you seem to have provided glad to hear that you are satisfied now I know why Lindriana was with you all what is it that you all seek? Several of us have business with House here and I. Ah, interesting. You know, they don't live here. You could simply go to their estate. Would they don't live anywhere. Easier. They don't live anywhere anymore. Oh, please. It's about time he found out. Would you like to inform him? No, but okay. Uh, maybe not all of them, but there are, um, some of them are dead, it seems. Ragnar, it was not our fault. Um, they were already dead. But um, he motions his hand 
and shutters come over the windows and the servants all leave. Oh, this is never good. Uh, Tyrell, Aoife, Altimer, you would, uh, probably Cap, you would definitely recognize that he just cast like three spells. Did you say? That is concerning. I think this involves a bit of a deeper explanation than what Ragna is comfortable giving. Yes, I would very much like that. Please, seat. And as he motions his hand, uh, the chairs get pushed out to meet you all. And he sits back down in the one he was in. They look very comfy dark crimson upholstery. Ragna will sit. Hoff will sit. Tyrell will not. Tyrell will look around the room, just kind of stroll. Stay in, stay right there where the chairs are, but sure. he's just going to kind of circle and sure, sure. just take in the room. Looking Aoife for exits scope. and hidden little areas and, you know, scoping the place out. Make an investigation test for me. I will do that. I'll stay standing sort of near Ragna's chair. I was also going to stay standing next to Ragna's chair with put one hand on her shoulder. I'm going to be slightly behind. Forgive me, Aoife. This... I'm not used to dealing with people of your station. And mm -hmm. will twist his hands in. And as he does, you hear like this <coughs> cracking wood sound. And the chair offered to you uh, breaks into several pieces and smashes down into the floor. And then it comes back out with this glorious antler display coming out of the top of it, uh, made of thick leathers and furs. Ooh, well, now that's more like it. I'll sort of take a seat, but just and perch like I'm ready to spring at any moment, but I will definitely perch. Do, do we all get one of those? Or are all of you the champion of a Daedric Lord? Hmm. You know, I haven't quite gotten there yet, unfortunately. Mm. You're clearly a man of taste, and I appreciate it. Thank you. That chair is actually a gift from the... I don't know... I mean... Nothing by the statement, but masters and mistresses of the hunt tend not to stay for very long. It's a very competitive religion. That it is. So, I've had to go through a few to get to where I am. I'm sure. Uh, a few of them ago gifted that to us. Very kind. Now, tell me more of the here and I. Ragna, would you like me to uh, take over to spare you the pain? So I got a 26 on that. <laughs> oh, I was like, uh, yeah, Alt, uh, go, go ahead. You are better, I think, uh, with the words than I am. Do you want uh, Tyrell to do his thing first? Or... As you begin to look around, there are a couple things you notice. One, even without using detect magic, there is just magic seeping out of every surface in this room. The books, the walls, the shelves, the ladders, the floors, the chairs, everything is enchanted somehow. You can just feel the energy as you begin to look around. You can also notice that along the wherever you can find stonework because this area has a lot of rugs and a lot of things covered in the floor whatever you find stonework that you do see like scraping marks pretty much everywhere uh it looks like a lot of these bookshelves can move um but based on the way you're understanding the structure of the house right now you're not 100 percent sure if that's just they can move around or if there's deeper into the home that they can go Yes, well, you see, Ragna, our good friend here, did have a contract as part of the Fighters Guild 
to um, escort the Hironai family through their crypts, I believe, and well... Uh, yes, their generational ancestor honorage. Yes, yes. Ancestor, yeah. Are you aware that there is no actual uh, tombs down there? There were tombs. Just the last not, room was not, not a tomb. Not just tombs. I mean, everyone keeps things in their crypts. That's not my business. This one was particularly interesting, I must say. I'm sure it was. What happened when you arrived? Besides three dead and one missing body? And an altar to Merun Stagon? Yeah, it was not regular tomb behavior. It was a little above and beyond. Um, it was not good. Now, far be it for me to condemn anyone for the worship of a Daedric Lord, obviously. <laughs> However, this one in particular is a bit concerning. Altars At least exist. what we saw on the altar. Altars exist for many reasons. Sometimes they're for worship, sometimes they're for payment. Hmm. Especially with Daedric beings, there can be a vested interest of offering up a gift to be left alone. I will speak with whomever is left of the here and I once this is all sorted out. You said three dead. Um, do you know who was among the deceased? Your paper, they did they give us names in Ragnar's paperwork? No, the it just said badges that I took. Uh, so you did find like their brooches, um, yeah. You uh, did you take them or did you just find I them? I took them. Oh, okay, uh, do you present them? Yes, okay, as you reach in, uh, uh. Uh, you pull out three brooches. And I would say whoever, uh, if there were any names on, like, the hiring part of the... There wasn't. It just asked. Yeah. It just asked for you, specifically. Yeah. Uh, interesting. This is the father, the mother, and the the youngest son. You said one was missing. Yeah. No, I don't see the oldest son's brooch among these. Hmm. That be Angramar? Yes, yes, that is Angramar here and I. Oh, we have a name. I'm sorry, the here and I family happen to have something that be belongs to my prince. There's multiple reasons Just why I'm looking for him. There's multiple reasons why we wish to talk to you about the Hiranai family. The appearance of a crypt or an altar is one of them, but not the most pressing, especially with how worship works in the Somerset Isles. As Aoife said, someone from the Hiranai family has taken something of her princess, and supposedly someone from the Hiranai family caused a murder on the other isle. In the honor of rebellion against the Empire. Well, to be fair, we also have mentioned that our knowledge that many factions may wish to cause strife among those here and of the noble houses, it may have not actually been the here and I, correct? It could have been someone who killed their members and then presented their crests to impersonate them. As we discussed, yes, that is a possibility, though I am just going off the current information that we have. I don't think that's likely. Which part, Tyrrell? The impersonator. You don't think so? No. You speak as if you know this, um, family, this son? You speak with confidence in your words. I know of him. Ah. That's all. 
Uh huh. I'm sure. He is somewhat prolific. Uh, he was an understudy here for a bit while I was writing one of my books. Um, very, very studied, traveled man. When was the last time you saw him? Oh, a few years, maybe. Our business with that family is more limited these days. They've repaid their debt to us. It's mostly just a continuously beneficial relationship. Do you have any reason or understanding of what could have caused their demise? Um, well, no. <laughs> The Huronai family, um, they were fairly closed off. They didn't do just terribly a lot. They, they were well, fairly moderate, modest. They sort of just followed whatever political trends that we follow. Did I believe him when he I said know. years ago? Oh, you can go ahead and roll inside. That's a natural 20 for a 28. Jeez. <laughs> yeah, he seems to be pretty earnest. He's having to think about it okay. quite a bit. And it, the way he's speaking and the the way, also based on, on his age, you're pretty sure he's just trying to remember. Um, well, so your couple years versus his couple years could be completely different. Yeah, yeah but it... it... I take it it has not been recently based on his behavior. So sure. He's not he's outwardly lying to me. He's telling the truth as far as he knows it. That's all I need to know. It's interesting you mention them as such a closed-off family when uh, it seems as though you, Dureni, yourselves have been the ones to um, close up. Unnecessary precaution. We were trying to find where this restoration was. I'm very impressed that you all found them. I will give credit where credit is due. Lindriana found them <laughs> and their location. Yeah. That does not surprise me. What was that, Goat? That does not surprise me. Why is that? <laughs> I am not one to speak of Lindriana's story. Now, you came here asking after the Huronai. You seem to have more information than I do. My family likes to honor bargains and debts. So what is it that I can do for you? I'll look at Aoife first. Uh, while Eva and Eva and and Ragna and, and everyone is just kind of um, just well, never mind. I'm gonna look, you go first. You go ahead. Well, frankly, it's a lot easier to get into places with uh, with the with the um, permission, <laughs> so to speak. Yes, yes, that is very true. So. Where is it that you seek to go? That's a good question. <laughs> I wouldn't mind going to look at the Huronai house. The Huronai estate itself, yeah. frankly. I have a request on behalf of myself and someone else in this group. Uh, speak. I squeeze your shoulder, Agna. I would like written confirmation and all blame cast aside from Ragna, because she will be blamed for the death of those Huronai members. And I would like you to write a note to the Fighters Guild, excusing her and making it explicitly clear that she is not to blame for this incident. Roll persuasion. Ooh. Uh, is it 
experience, any chance I can assist her. What do you have to say to add to that? I was just going to say, you you see that this, uh, our friend Ragna has been caught in bad situations before, and as Lindriana had pointed out, so has she. And so we helped, just as we helped Lynn, our friend Ragna could really use the reputation of her guild for what she wants to do. And I think you understand the power of words enough to know that what you can give us is free to you and powerful to her. Add an additional two to whatever you rolled there. I'm going to use a natural, one of my crits. <laughs> For 29. Okay. By, by the way, uh, my overlay is wrong. I have, I'm down to one. Oh, okay. I'll take that here in a second. Oh, I'm, Eve has completely tapped out of both yeah. crits and advantages at so this point. <laughs> oh. Right, no worries. I'll fix that in a second. Sure, I mean, sure. Yeah, I've got three crits, yeah. <laughs> I have, no, I'll be honest, I have nothing. Um, uh, nothing. I, hmm. yeah. I will reach out. Hmm. He looks over and points at a shelf and motions, and one of the books just kind of floats over to him. He pours through it for a moment. Let's see. When you get to my age, you need to record who everyone is, otherwise you'll never remember them. Um, all right. Where? I'm actually trying to find the name because I wrote it down and I can't find it. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm and as for slightly. myself, Go ahead. Yeah. any assistance you could give us specifically me in squashing this idea of rebellion would be greatly appreciated. Ragna will um, put her hand on uh, your hand, Kat, um, and she'll smile over at you all. Ho hopefully getting your uh, side. Vilena. I, I will contact Vilena. She's an old friend. I'll see what I can do. I'll just Thank give a, a wink over to Ragna. Ragna. Velena is a first name. You assume that he means Velena Daunton. Oh, okay. Who is the guildmaster. Thank you very much, sir. Um... I don't know what to say, but thank you. You're welcome. Now, about rebellion. The only There's always going to be splinter groups. There's always going to be those who advocate for this and that. We've got one, I'm meeting with one later today, call themselves the Falmore trying to evoke an ancient name. Most of them are simply political. They vie for power, they ask for a vote, money changes hands. It's... Tedious. Tedious, yes. But I assume you're looking for something a bit more... explosive. I'm looking for the ones that are going to get a lot of innocent people killed. Yeah. I don't care about the ones that are money laundering and vying for power with no real sway. So, uh, from what I can gather, you all believe that Angramar here and I assassinated a cannon reeve in Skywatch and is trying to foment a rebellion of his own. Kirill, do you think it is the oldest son? I was not even aware. 
Yeah, I think it's likely. Any hunches on why, or is this a gut feeling? I'm pretty sure he's the one that did it. He was carrying a spear. He's carrying my spear to, well, my prince's spear to be right. exact, but yeah. yes. You think that was him? That was the son? Yeah. Wait, wait. I wait, do. Wait, what? What day is it? What's, and he uh, begins thinking, and he, he's moving his hands back and forth. Uh, you notice there's little bits of, like, gold energy kind of passing between his hands. What? He has, he, he has the spear of bitter mercy. <laughs> yes, that's one yes. Of, one of the names of it. Yeah. Hmm. I, I see. You can see why we're eager to find him then. There is a. Ifrian prophecy that talks about piercing the veils of Mundus and allowing for greater beings to pass and travel. I... <laughs> oh, that is deep. Oh, uh... <laughs> It involves, well, when they, some believe that when they say piercing the veil, they mean it very literally. It's debated the time of year, but supposedly there is a solstice of sorts in the middle of summer that is connected to Ifri's holy day. If someone was trying to allow... Breaking from the Empire would not be a small task. Um, the Somerset Isles came under Imperial influence from a great golem called the Dumidian. Such power is what the Septum Line can wield. If a serious attempt is to be made, a serious power would be needed. I... I am concerned that perhaps someone, possibly Angramar, if you are correct, might be attempting to fulfill that prophecy. Lovely. Are these prophecies fulfilled that often? Is it something to actually take stake in, or is it just a wives' tale to keep children in at night? As the dragon breaks, prophecies are both fulfilled and forgotten. I'm not to say which ones will come and which ones will fade. I do pay attention to the sign. The dragon breaks are a mess, and unless you have the experience, the knowledge to do so, it's best not to think about it and strain your head. It's interesting that you have knowledge of such things. This particular prophecy, being that it's a Freean, would need a place of old natural power. There's one here in the aisles. I don't know how to get in it, though. Um, you passed by the outskirts of it. There's a, a grand forest. The very center of it, the trees grow so close together. People have tried. And if their remains are found, they're found torn apart. <laughs> Whether that's the trees or something else in those woods, I don't know, but it the density is too much to get past. 
but unless he's this person is leaving the Isles, that's where they would go for such a thing. Well, that is a handy bit of information indeed. And frankly, yeah. whether or not that uh, prophecy comes true is meant to come true or not. Me getting that spear back will certainly help it pr help prevent it. Mm, I imagine so. I imagine so. I, what what kind of ritual or strange invocation do, would they have to do to achieve such a thing? Those who follow the Green Pact are they don't write things down as such would be to use the body of a tree something they refuse to do so it's all verbal so it's second third removed at best and hearsay and it it's unknown the argument is that the only part of the prophecy that has been reliably retold is a piercing of the veil based on other Ephrian teachings they tend to be very literal so it's assumed that some grand weapon of great power would be required for such a task and the use like. of these Ephrian holy sites to amplify the magics needed it's a lot of assumption. Very little is known. At least not to us. Hmm. And does anything um, about either the Grove or the Thalmor themselves, um, current day Thalmor, sound familiar to me? Uh, in exploring uh, Aoife in Ragnar, part of this, in exploring the wilds of Skyrim, um, you've definitely come across places uh, where dryads gather and where you can tell nature still rules. You've you've seen this. You've seen this power. Does it, he seems to be talking on a much larger scale? So you're not a hundred percent sure. Mm. Cat. Let me see. Cat and Tyrol. Sorry, I'm looking at all of your passive perceptions. <laughs> it's a Tyrol's lot. is Tyrol's is better, yeah, and mine's yeah. actually not that good compared to a lot of others. Cat, Tyrol, Efa. Jeez, jeez, why is... did you all? <laughs> I did not. Oh, I'm a hunter everything. looking at looking at things for things, being aware of my surroundings. I'm, is what I'm I a do. hunter of sorts as well. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I am a hunter of sorts as well. <laughs> okay, so everyone except Altamir. <laughs> uh, as as you're looking around the room and as as he's speaking, you're noticing different things. Tira, like I said, you're noticing more of that. There's a lot more to this room than you would seen. There's definitely secrets here. Altamir, you're noticing the magics, but you're also noticing just small things happening. Just It seems like there's constantly a bit of magic here, a bit of magic there. Aoife, the thing that you are noticing is that the books on the ground low down are not very interesting the ones high up some of them are made of some very interesting animal skins um, mm. something that's not done commonly very old ragna you as you were looking around you are noticing a few interesting uh off in one of the windows there's a small collection of statues a few of them look fairly interesting you think you've read about one of them before how making an offering to it is what helps keep oh I gotta remember the 
exact thing I told you. Uh, This is like a massive library, right? Oh yeah, huge, huge. Where did I? Uh, oh, okay. It keeps the Spriggans appeased. Cat, you notice the same collection of statues off. Uh, you notice that one of them is uh, Julianus's symbol. There's one that is Akatosh's symbol. There's one that is Mara's symbol. Are these Adra? Yes. Okay. There's one that's Debella's symbol, which is always interesting to see anywhere. But hidden behind the Debellin statue is just a very small figurine that looks like an octopus. Okay. Thank you. Cthulhu. <laughs> <laughs> so. If you would like, I will allow you to peruse my library for a bit. See if there's more information perhaps stored here that is not here. Oh, that was very kind of you. You've got quite the collection here. I do. Yes. Ah, I do. It's very nice. I look forward to perusing these uh, stacks. Uh, however, my business is actually not of the here and I. I just simply wish to talk with, uh, I believe, Lynn's wife, I believe. Uh, I believe they are together at the moment. Um, I'm sure they'll be back down Eventually. Soon. It's been several months since they've seen each other. Ah, yes. Patience, all. All the time they need. Just wanted to bring it up. Sure. They have a lot of catching up to do. I, I will let the servants know to notify them that you are waiting. Sure. Will we have access to your library throughout our entire stay? to be curt, but I don't believe you'll be staying that long. I However, yes, you can peruse as you see fit. I will let you do it unwise. Question, DM? Well. Yes. Oh, sorry. Do we know how long it is until the solstice? So, what he's describing doesn't sound uh -huh. like a real solstice. Okay. Um, because there's, there's, you know, there's the summer solstice and the winter solstice. Mm -hmm. uh, what he's describing is something in the middle of summer that's not quite. It's it, the dates. The dates would be off. Um, I so see. It's not one that you would recognize. I see. Wonderful. Okay. With that, I bid you good hunting. And he gets up and he begins to leave. Thank you. Well, I suppose that uh, this clears up most questions of some things that we've had, and Ragna may just get off without an issue with the guild, perhaps? I'm not sure, but we can hope. Time will tell. Terrible. Go, oh, go ahead. No, you. I was going to say, I think the one most likely to not let Ragna back in would be Lathara. Um... She seems to be having a bit of a hard time, um, but maybe um, I will have better luck with the Guildmaster. With any luck, perhaps. Now, what's interesting to me is how much our friend Tyrol had to say of this conversation. Yeah, speaking of Tyrol, I know we've only known each other for a couple days. And I thought we were all going to work together to benefit each other. But if you do think there's going to be any information or gut feelings, it would have been great to know at the time. 
I'll inform you of any future gut feelings. Of course. All these shelves slide around. What? Oh. They can all move. Look. Let's show them the scratches. Like this whole room can just be conformed in different ways. Wow. Maybe. The rich really know how to live and build a library? Like you could just rearrange it at any point? That is so fancy. Maybe but also fancy. maybe you could conceal other rooms and stuff. My thoughts exactly, Ragnar. Yeah. Right the parlor trick. It seems we're not being watched, are we? He said we we're gonna be alone. I mean, Do I... he left, and then everyone else, he had sent them out before the conversation mm -hmm. really gotten going. So now that he's gone, I want to poke around every corner in this place. Okay, cool. <laughs> I want to get nosy as make bird. another investigation test. Nosy time. Ooh, that's twenty-eight. <laughs> All right. What is everyone else doing? We'll get back to that in just a second. Uh... Well, I'll be following my nose and checking out those interesting animal skin books. Okay. All right. It's not how I'm used to hunting, but uh, frankly, these, these books are all like up that mm -hmm. Aoife's looking for, like several stories up. Yeah, but there are ladders. Oh, no, I'm just curious where she's just going. Mm -hmm. Alt would be uh, looking around the library for specifically um, any kind of information on the Dureni family history or okay. um, things of that nature. He'd be going through it with mage hands, so he's just kind of like moving books up. Mm. Shelves that he's not can't reach and such. Okay. Cat Reg and Ragna. Ragna has a few things she would like to do. Um, the first is she's going to go up to um, the statue that caught her eye. Okay. Um, and she's going to dig through her bag a lot and um, mutter to herself, and she's going to pull out um, her dice set and set it down in front of it, um, and then put it back in her bag uh, and bring out her insect repellent self. Uh, and before she even sets it down, she's going to go, oh, no, 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 uh, Spriggans would not like this, that they like the bugs. Um, uh, I head up and... next to you, because I'm gonna, I'm gonna follow you to these statues. Okay, yeah. Um, uh, she's going to pull out her water skin, uh, and when she sees you catch, she'll be like, what do you think the Spriggans would like? Um, because it is good to be on their good side, and I sort of feel like we have had not the best luck, and anything that we can do would be great. Um, I was going to offer them some water, because why wouldn't they like some water? Um, but I am open to suggestions. The statue that she's putting things in front of is the octopus statue. <sighs> Sorry, that wasn't muted. <laughs> You'll have... I'm knowledgeable about some of these gods, and I point to a couple of the Aedra Nine. Sure. This is a very common religion back on the mainland. Yeah, but I'm not familiar with this one. Maybe you can tell me what they value and I can help you brainstorm from there. Oh, well, um, do I know anything about that specific, aside from the Spriggans, do I know? Make a I also, roll. I'm also not super familiar what Spriggans are. Can you tell me? <laughs> I will find a picture and post it in the... <laughs> Discord. This is where my Elder Scrolls lack of knowledge is working against me. Can I hear that conversation that they had about Spriggans and stuff? Uh, I wouldn't me? have been quiet. Sure, yeah. I got 15. Ragna, do the Spriggans like magic? Don't you have a trick or two now? 
I mean, they are Aedra, yeah, so they probably like the magic, which is live and it's weird and not reliable, but yeah. Since when have you been able to do that? You did some fancy stuff back in that other house. Yeah, well, like I said, that is not magic. That is Kanye's blessing, which is totally different. Uh-huh. Totally different, like, how I can become a werewolf. You didn't used to be able to do that. Oh, no. No, I could not do that before, no. Um, but it is not quite like being a werewolf. Like, that looks a little painful. And, um... Magica related? Not to judge. I do not judge my good friend, Aoife. Mm -hmm. It just seems very magic -y. Like okay. what you did. How about something that means... That could be valuable to you? Well, yeah, that's why I was going to offer the insect self, because it is very important to me that I not get the bug bites. Um, but, like, they are um, very nature. Uh, if they're one with nature, what are they going to do with insect repellent? Exactly, like, they like the bugs. So, more power, they should take the bugs. If I had bugs to offer, I would give them the bug. I do not carry bugs around on me. That is a good idea, though. I am not the most religious, though I am familiar with some. But I think the point of an offering is something that would be one of a kind and worth something to who you're worshipping. Something not commonly found. Oh, well. Uh, if you were offering no, they prayers. Can't have that. Um, prayers could be come in all different forms and sizes and not everyone is going to be the same. That requires the thinking and the talking. Um, I think perhaps maybe what I shall do is um, who can argue with this? And she's just going to slice her finger with her dagger um, and um, offer a little of her blood um and then turn around and walk towards the doors um because she's going to ask someone outside if she uh might be allowed to pick one parentheses one flower a black anther if they have it well that sure looks like magic to me no she said unique thing nobody else has my blood that would be weird She's not wrong. And are you really going to argue with her, rat, Aoife? You're the one who said it's not worth trying to get it through her head when I first met you. You make a very good point, Kat. But, uh, I just didn't take Ragna for one for bloodletting. She's a warrior. I think she can handle it a bit. Uh, Ragna we might be. <laughs> would she be allowed a, fl a flower do they have a black anther you could go back outside and find one probably yeah well I don't want to steal it like I I want to yeah, I mean, you could go ask like... okay so Ragna leaves the room for a minute yes um, as Tyrell goes up the ladder to her book Tyrell's being nosy as fuck. <laughs> uh, as everyone else walks away, um, are they like on a shelf? What's the height difference between these? Um... They're, they're like stomach height. A couple, like three feet off the ground ish. I'm five foot. I'll just bend over slightly in front of it. <sighs> it's been a while. A deal is a deal. I think this little tidbit will be enough. But I'm sure you are already listening to our conversation. Were you aware there was a, an altar to a certain Daedric Prince in the crypt of the Hiranai House? I will pause. Straighten up. Nod. And just peruse. As you are sure, uh, you're standing there for a moment. 
As you're sure that no one else is looking, one of the tentacles of the statue raises. And it kind of like points out to you. I shake it. Everyone else, you just see that Cat is like examining these statues pretty closely. Cat. The world darkens pretty significantly. The lights take on a pale green glow. And you have done well. And that's where we're going to go to break. Mm. <laughs> Get some water, stretch, uh. a snack, check out our sponsors. We will be back shortly. Oh, baby, I love your madness. It's... Welcome to our Patreon. Here on Open for Adventure, we are making high quality Dungeons and Dragons content, folks. We have a great big world to share with you. And by becoming a patron, you can help us explore and expand upon this adventure. With your support, we can invest in more amazing artwork, better mics, fancy cameras, and overall stream quality. Not to mention, help us get some amazing new merch that we can use for giveaways. What do you get by becoming a patron? I'm so glad you asked. Let's take a look at the different levels and give you a sneak peek at what you can get at each tier. Did you know that the family of the First Lord Theo, the leader of the Rebellion Against the Empire, actually invented firearms nearly 25 years prior to the current campaign? The designs for this high-tech weapon are the Delaney family's best-kept secret. Also, they were originally invented by the late First Lady Victoria, Theo's mother. Access to lore leaks like this is what you can expect from the first tier, written in blog-style posts after each weekly session. Ever wonder what goes on off-camera? The next three tiers give you exactly that. With Stolen Moments, you can get access to text-based roleplay moments, highlighting experiences that don't make it onto the stream, like Leona's training session with Ray and Esme. Stolen Moments Plus gives you access to roleplay moments featuring our guests, non-player characters, and historical figures, featuring the likes of Marshall, Anna Lena, and even the Empress herself. And Roleplay Addiction takes us to a whole other level. This tier gives you exclusive 30-minute videos of canon interactions not otherwise seen on stream, like late-night drunken interactions between paladins or tender moments featuring your favorite character ships. The Warm Fuzzies is super simple. It's everything I've listed so far, and also you get your name on stream after our weekly regular sessions. Every session. And our undying love. And finally, the most epic of all Patreon tiers. Drum roll, please! <laughs> the Loremaster. This ultimate and final tier gets you first look access at all of the content going into our upcoming official open for adventure campaign setting lore maps monsters items dungeons dragons a hey. go ahead have a look around make yourself at home and consider becoming a patron to help us make this fantasy world a little bit closer to reality <laughs>
Oh, hi. My name is Express Love. I'm the Sinmarian god of coffee. Did you know that in Sinmaria, every cup of coffee is made with found familiar coffee beans? That's canon. In Sinmaria, every cup of coffee is good coffee because it's made with love by found familiar. Did you know that every bag of found familiar coffee features artwork from incredible members of the tabletop gaming community? That's canon. Each blend and roast of found familiar coffee features cool D&D names like Thieves' Cant, Face Death, and Packed Magic. In Sinmaria, every royal meeting that Ray attends features the Cartographer's Blend, a brew of coffee made by found familiar in conjunction with Devon Rue. Now that's canon. Found familiar coffee. Buy it today.
And we're back. Thanks, everybody. Hope you got your various beverages and whatnot. Checked out our awesome sponsors. So. You've done well. Yes, yes, I've done well. You know, I'm not one for idle chatter. What's particular details did you learn in that crypt? Mm, I would detail all that I recall and remember. Uh, Mare's blanking on specific details because I'm bad at this, but yes. Uh, you, you found the altar to Mare's Dagon. You found yes. that sacrificial dagger, the writings yep. all over it, the scorch marks on the floor. Mm -hmm. um, interesting. What do you seek in exchange? There are rumors of rebellion in the Somerset Isles. Anything that could help aid in squashing the more explosive and harmful effects of said rebellion would be much appreciated. 
most explosive one is likely the one that you saw begin. The one I saw is something I already knew. Something I do not know. Let's go down the list. Anything that could help take that one down would also be appreciated. The location. The rest have no traction yet. A few hundred years, maybe. I can How to get in that forest? I think that would be a more than fair trade. The density of the wood can only be navigated by creatures with the ability to travel through the ether. One such creature is native to those lands. Would I be aware of that creature? That type of creature? And I'm going back in my notes to see if I do. Make a this nature is, roll if you want. I was... My first thought... My first thought was the Indrik? Is that what they're called? That is the name, yes. No, and I'm not going to use my crit on it. Uh, <laughs> single, single digits. And I'm assuming if I want in the name of any such creatures, I would have to get more information for you in return. You've learned so well. What's that Though, quote? I didn't... Oh, sorry. You learned so well. Okay. Though the knowledge is known to your group. Ask here seems champion. And with that, you fade back into the library. Ragna, you come back in. You've successfully found the flowers. One of the servants helped you get them. That was very kind of them. Um, I would like to leave the flowers in front of the statue to Mara, uh, or the symbol of Mara. Sure. Uh, and then I would like to track down Tyrrell. Okay. Tyrrell, as you've been wandering, looking, trying to figure this place out, what you can tell is the, the wood of the shelves is unnatural. The stonework columns are unnatural. This, there's something, this place is almost fabricated instead of built. If you're not sure what that means for what you're seeing, but it's very odd. Can I open any of the, can I move any of the shelves? You attempt to, but none of them seem to give to your attempts. Can I just uh, check in on if I found a yeah. on the journey history? As you're looking, uh, there are books about the here the here the Dureni dynasty. Uh, great storied tomes. Um, most of them are just 
kind of he begat this person who did this deed who earned these things um there is the story of the founding of the adamantine tower um that's more just the way they talk about having secured it and the the stories of that's where the adra stood the final time they were in mundus and all that sort of things uh, you do find uh, Dere Rum Derenis, who the author is noted as Vorian Dereni, um, the person you were mm. just talking to, uh, that particular book, it's more of an autobiography. It talks about... Mm. wars that have happened things that he's seen sort of his musings on the state of the world and where he thinks it's going to go nothing very interesting um, um how far back does it go by chance like how old do i think this guy is from this oh actually the opening line is i'm 611 years old oh okay <laughs> wow it's a lot of birthdays um well uh okay is there did i get any um info on the modern day Dereni family like lineage or anything unless one of them writes an autobiography it doesn't seem like they record gotcha. their current generation okay then i'll just keep musing and perusing ifa the books that, that you find are all very old some of them written in languages that you know most of them written in ones that you don't the ones that you do recognize talk about early settlements early history early oral traditions that are first transcribed onto what you think is deerskin pages Ooh. um are there any in languages that i don't personally know, but perhaps if I were to activate my pack, I might be able to read. You could attempt it. Um. Okay. I, I, you know what? I'll go ahead and do that. Okay. You tap into the blood. Mm-hmm. It kind of courses through you. The only language that you can pick up that you recognize is an ancient dialect of Sylvan. Oh. And Interesting. it actually talks about uh, the the scourge of the werebears um, throughout Skyrim. Specifically noting that they were st- starting to very seriously try to figure out which divine entity might be able to help them with this um mm. because the wo- it says that the wolves were one thing to handle but now this is growing and this is changing and we're seeing this in more um perhaps there is some great master of the hunt who could help us from what you can gather these are the first written records of worship of here seen That's wonderful. As you read through it, it does talk about the the coming of a man. Um, a town was beset upon by these werebears. Uh, they seemed that they were going to annihilate the town when a man arrived. And he commanded them, and they stopped. And then an ancient Spriggan matron moved against him. One of the bears struck out at her. And at first it seemed that the bear had killed her, but really it seemed that the bear had infected her. And she grew and morphed into a creature that has never been named for fear of giving it power. However, the head of it grew these large antlers. It is said that the man that arrived struck down this being with a spear and took its head for a helmet 
Hmm. Sounds like somebody I know. It does. It does. Hmm. Ancient spray and matron. Um. Am I able to find in any of these books anything about the the forest that he was that was mentioned? Several of these tomes do talk of forests, um, of ancient places of power. Uh, there's one that is, it seems like it's in a similar dialect to the one that your, your patron is allowing you to understand, but it's, it's foreign enough to where you're unsure of, okay. of some of the specifics. Uh, the, what you can kind of infer and make out from it is that uh, there's another being named Ifri that is worshipped in the south and places sacred to Ifri are much more wild but wild with their uh, flora and they're incredibly rich and lush natural growth I sort of um, with the book that with the book that you know tells the story mm -hmm. of the scourge of the were bears I sort of like lovingly touch the page like that and the book and close the book and sort of like it's an extra connection sure I'm trying to think if there's anything else not at the moment <laughs> Okay. Ragna, did you want to find Tyrrell? Go for it. Tyrrell, do I find you? Sure, why not? Uh, I would try to find him somewhere not near the others. Easy to um, do. He tends to avoid them. <laughs> yeah. I guess. Yeah. Um, Oh, hi, Tyrrell. Hi. Hi. Um, so, you know how, like, we are friends, sort of, um, in our way, like, we have had one good conversation, I guess. Um, basically the same thing. Uh, I was wondering if I could ask you a favor. You could ask, sure. Yeah, oh, good. That's, that's a good start. Um, so, the others have been very kind to Ragna, um, but would you maybe just watch Ragna and make sure she does not do anything to endanger her friends? Um, and you, you are a friend to Ragna. Um, I think maybe I tried to come back too soon. And I do not feel like I am making always the best decisions. Uh, I could have killed Alt for some reason. I still don't know how, and that bothers me. Um, and I do not want to kill any of you accidentally. Oh, or on purpose. I do not want to kill you on purpose either. Is that something you're known to do? I am just asking okay please um i trust you i mean i don't but of That's anyone smart. here you have the best judgment for something like that i think um cat is very rules oriented um and i worry she would not take this in the spirit in which it is meant um, if you start hurting us then I'd take you out okay that is a big step I wasn't quite asking that but yeah it, okay. you just you okay I think I understand oh. what you're saying yeah I'm not sure we do but okay That's, tell me this yeah. what do you mean came back too soon I 
was kicked out of the guild, uh, I think, as you know. Um, I don't know why, though. Someone died. Did you kill them? It was my fault that we were there. And there yeah. is more I could have done. I did not kill them the way that you killed them. Um, but they are still dead. And I do not want any of you to die like that. How'd, how'd, how'd they die? So that I know what to look out for. I made a mistake. Uh, while they were delving. And I did not judge the rocks correctly. And she was crushed. And... It sounds I like she... Out. You left her to die. She was already dead. It... Did, did you put the rocks on top of her? It was my mistake. It sounds like it was her mistake. She did not know the rocks like I did. That did she should have problem. waited for you. To be sure. It's not your fault. I did not come to you, Zero, for comfort. And I'm not offering comfort, I'm speaking truth. Thank you, either way. I'll keep an eye on you. I'll keep an eye out for loose rocks and I'll ask a favor in return. Yeah, of course. When we find Angramar here and I. Yeah. I'm the one that takes his life. Ragna will hold out her hand to shake on it. No one else. Okay. Let's shake her hand. And then Ragna is going to go look for books on uh, cinched cats. Okay. Tigers. Uh, go ahead and roll investigation on that. Cat, what are you doing? Um, I think while everyone else is just looking around, doing their own research and reading, I am going to do some research for a little bit on the line of the Dureni family. But maybe also trying to get a idea where Lynn learned her martial prowess. Roll investigation. When it comes to learning about the line of the Rooney family, you actually overlap with Alt a fair bit. Uh, mm -hmm. He seems to be going through similar books. Um, you don't learn anything beyond the, what I already told him. Okay. I got an 18. I also got an 18. Okay. Ragna, you do find uh, a taxonomy book about senches in general. Um, you also find a book specifically uh, about Elzerian legends. We'll get back to that. Cat, you find...
Repeat the wording of what you're looking for again. I am looking for, in general, looking like back on the Dereni line specifically, mm -hmm. um, where she crossed paths with, um, where she married into the family, okay. because she's not she's not Dereni. Um, but also maybe um, to get a clue where she learned her combat prowess, specifically mm -hmm. what I learned last week, which was very, very old and very, very rare. I can't sure, find the word in my sure. notes. That's fine. Uh, Dragon Knight. Yes, thank was. you. Okay. You don't see Lynn. Uh, as being listed as a spouse of anyone in the modern family tree. But you're an investigator by nature, and you dig through, and you dig, and you go back. And about 749 years ago, there is listed a marriage. All it says is uh, this marriage unites the Doreni and the Telvani. Um, and she does not look 750 plus years old? No, no. Uh, there are initials written in it. Uh, DD and LT. Altamir, did you find anything interesting? I say as I'm sitting on one of the rolling uh, ladders with a book in my lap. You know, I couldn't find too much on Lynn, which was, which was what I was kind of searching for, but... I did find very interesting things about the family's involvement in the Adamantine Tower. I don't know if you've heard of such a thing, and uh, some sort of autobiography by Vorian himself. Am I familiar with that? You're definitely familiar with the Adamantine Tower. It's well, what uh, is it for? The... What is it for, Mary? <laughs> That's fine. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, oh, what is that tower called? Hang on. The Diamond Tower. The, the tower in the Imperial City is the White oh. Gold Tower. Right, because it's the White Gold Tower. Okay. Uh, it's called the White Gold Tower. It is one of three towers, I think it's three, that all have this very similar architecture and design. Um, this one is white and gold. There is one that has more of a green hue. It's called the Adamantine Tower, and it is off the coast of High Rock. The Dereni family control it. Supposedly, the Adamantine Tower is the last place that the Aedra sat as they decided what they were going to do with Mundus, and when they decided to become the not or the Eight, and where some of the Daedra decided to become the Daedra. Then there is the Crystal Tower, which is here in Somerset. Don't know a lot about that one, but it's here. Interesting. Is it? useful for your stories perhaps well uh it's certainly told me that this family is steeped in magics of all sorts for many long years there are not many families that can trace back to such pivotal moments of magic from my understanding i only know about them from the stories we tell hmm. interesting also here, I think I found a little bit of information for you on Lynn. Oh. And I'll just hand you the book with the marriage un unification. Mm -hmm. Oh, so, and it says DD and TL, or uh, LT. Um, oh, 750 said, years and, ago. And the note that says this is what unified the Dereni and Telvani lines. Although I well, don't know that you knew her last name. Pretty no. sure only Cat knew that. I, I suppose uh, Telvani then is is Lynn's last name. Oh yeah, a bunch of you went off to bed and we drank and talked a little bit when we were at the inn. Ah, I see. Well then, they are older than I expected. Um, 
And unfortunately, the initials don't tell me anything more of her spouse than than I already knew. At least, I don't know past her nickname. Anyway. Well, you might be meeting her soon anyway, right? Potentially. We'll see where that goes. Guess I'm gonna go chill back on the, like on the cushioned chairs and just wait through it. Sure. Mayor, you also do find a book about like ancient warfare. Um, there is one section that talks about the Unification War, the Three Banners War. Um, it talks about the tactics of a lot of different groups, a lot of different significant battles. Uh, when it comes down. There's not a lot on, like, individual martial traditions, but it does note that uh, the scale and flamed knights who fought for the Ebon Heart Pact are largely considered responsible for the size of Morrowind's holdings. They do describe a bit of the tactics used by that group. Uh, and it... Magics of flame and stone is what they talk a lot about. Okay. Ragna. The taxonomy of senches doesn't really tell you a ton. Um more talking about the various their parts and their paws and whatnot. Um, they have big paws. Ragnar knew this. They large. Very large. The Legends book, however, is maybe more interesting. It talks about the uh, Shadow Ghast Senches. It is said that Shadow Ghasts, of all the Senches, uh, many of which the Khajiit consider not distant cousin, but a revered being. Um, it is somewhat connected to them. Uh, many of which they try to form bonds with. You know, the Senches defend their moon sugar fields. Senches get to eat. Uh, there's a lot of good cohabitive relationships there. Shadow Gas Senches do not form these relationships. Shadow Gas Senches do not form bonds. The only thing that is believed the Shadow Gas Senches are for is they arrive sent by the greater beings of death to escort someone to their final rest. It has never been known for a Shadow Gas Sench to be with someone for more than a few days. Because usually within that time is when they find their rest. The book has an excerpt um, that is written in Elswirian, which is a dialect of Sylvan, if you know Sylvan. Okay. There is a large... Uh, the, the text before just says this details um, an encounter with a sench, but they don't sum it up in your common language. Um, I would ask not too loud because this is kind of a library and we are quiet in libraries. Um, oh, hello, friends. Does anyone speak Sylvan? Maybe. I, do, I, do I recognize that it's Sylvan? Sure. Okay. I do. Oh, do you need help with something, Ragnar? Yeah, please, if you don't mind. Um, I would just like the um, short notes version of this. This. Short notes. <laughs> I'm going to hang on to my... The, I'm going to take the book with that I've been reading with me. Just to sort of hang on to it for a little bit longer. Sure. Um, but I'll come down and 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 help and read the book from Ragnar. Thank you. 
I'll, I'll see what I. It's. It is again. It's it's not a one hundred percent same dialect mm-hmm. that that you are being empowered to read. But what you can t- what you can understand from it is that the shadow ghast comes, and it offers peace. It offers the final rest. Those who accept are escorted with dignity. Those who do not. And the wording here gets a little strange. It says something to the effect of the sench will call the claws from beneath the sands to drag the person to slumber. I I will sort of be reading this out loud for Ragnar. But Ragnar, how long have you been with Bashir? Oh, a few years. Uh, he has never dragged me into the sand, though. I mean, like, once when we were playing, but it wasn't, like, all the way in the sand. Like, I just got a little dirty. I don't understand. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm just, just, uh, Altamir's kind of like locked up. I couldn't help. Let me get this straight. Your, your cat is a form of a bringer of death in Khajiit culture that is an omen of death to those it appears in front of. And you've been traveling with it for years. He was just a baby. What was I supposed to do? Just leave him to die? No. That is very not nice. Something Um, that you note, Aoife, as you are reading through the text. Anytime it talks about the appearance of a shadow ghast, they are full adults. mm -hmm. Never does it mention cubs. Um, And in the taxonomy book, uh, Ragna, it doesn't it mentions the shadow ghast coat pattern as being a very rare pattern um, but doesn't give any other information um I mean obviously uh, there is probably a basis for this um, not being of that culture uh, I have not spent that much time down there um, and only know a little of it, uh, but he is, you have met him. He is just outside. He is good boy. Yes. He, Bashir is a very good cat, yes. And has he ushered any of you to death yet? No. N- not, not to my knowledge, but we've only been around you with the cat for like two days. So, like, worst case scenario, you've got one more day, and then after that, it's fine. You know, I have known plenty of people for more than three days. You know, you say that with such a chipper tone, for, my dear friend, but somehow that's less comforting. Look, there is very easy way to find out. Just Honest? survive the next day. Honestly, I wouldn't worry about it until something happens. It's no sense yeah. worrying over anything when we can't even tell the future. Don't worry about it. Has there it, been a many deaths that have followed you and Bashir since you've raised him? That's what someone asked already, and I already told them it was rude, and I'm going to tell you it's rude. Thank you, Kat. Yeah, it is sort of rude. Um, I, 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 it, yes, also... Okay. That implies that I know what is going on behind me, but like I am already gone. But I should probably check in on my mother now that you mention it. I will not push you any further, Ragnar. Okay, maybe I could write a letter uh, while we are here. And maybe, maybe you're right. Maybe since you've had this one since he was but a kitten, it doesn't. It's not one of. 
the harbingers of death or whatever, but, you know, as... I frankly have seen enough to be a little nervous where tall tales are involved. Generally, they exist for a reason. It, that's fair. I understand where you're coming from, and I don't want to push back or anything, but I will point out that we have sort of been um, in some sticky situations while we have been here, and, and uh, have been doing a little healing of our own. Um, we mm. could just sit and play cards in an inn somewhere and see what happens, but uh, everyone is sort of busy trying to um, you know, catch an assassin and um, whatever it is Alt is doing and trying to stop the world from blowing up or whatever Cat is doing. Um, and then there's Tyrrell. She just is going to look at Tyrrell. Anyway, um, yeah. Maybe he is Harbinger of Death, but he's good boy. You know what? You have a very good point, and I suggest that we try this whole sitting down and playing cards thing for a couple days after we deal with this Agner person. Oh, yeah. yeah Ragnar would like that very much. Speaking of that, Aoife, what do you know about um, creatures of nature that can go through the ether? Ah, that. DM, what do I know about such things? Uh, make a nature check. Okay. At advantage. Oh, good. Thank you. Oh, those are... Well, that's a 12. Okay. Thankfully, you very recently have seen some interesting tracks. Oh yeah, that are, mm -hmm. I sure did. That are aiding you in this. Um, you're not super familiar uh, with a lot of creatures, uh, and the ether is sort of a strange term to use. What you do know right. is that there is a very dangerous creature. Um, that I mean, they're here in Somerset, and they're called Indrix. And they have a very str they have a very strange set of abilities, but they have a very strange ability uh, to be able to vanish and appear distances away from where they vanished. Uh -huh. Very rapidly. If if Kat, first of all, before I tell her this, first of all, Kat, why do you ask? Oh. That's how we're going to get through the woods. Is these creatures that can go through the ether, is what you said? Yes. Apparently, huh? that's what... <sighs> Nature is not my forte. Oh, jeez. Apparently those creatures are able to go through the woods. And if we need to go through the woods, we should probably find these creatures. I have heard of such a creature that can do that. Okay. They're here on Somerset. Okay. Um, they're called Endrix. They're sort of... Like a big deer, really. Like a really big... They're strange. I mean, as far as... I don't know. I can't say that I know much about them. Like, such as where to find them or anything, but, uh... Dangerous? Well, yeah. You do Being know where some that... very recent tracks are. That's true. We do. I did see... Remember... Do you remember that house where with the, you know, gross people who tried to kill us? Yes. And the it bandits? was literally several hours ago. Right, yeah. Outside that house, there were some tracks of what appeared to be very big deer and were frankly that's probably what were there are those Indrex. like I said they're here on this island there are not many other places if any 
and they can do what you ask. And what you're looking for. Well, yes. To get through those woods. Yeah. Hmm. I flip through the book, close it, and I will put it back on the shelf and climb down the ladder. All right. Looks like we're doing some more hunting. Wonderful. How? Actually, no. I'll let um, Tyrell, Tyrell go. Oh, you're not snooping anymore? Or did I miss it? Mm, is there anything else left to find? Nothing else that's like jumping out at you. Okay. Didn't know if you're gonna try going through behind some bookshelves or anything. I tried to move them and I couldn't move them. Um, what time of day is it? How long have we been in the library? It's leaving time. Uh, it's like three, four in the afternoon. Yeah. I think it would be best if we do not leave tonight. What do I don't understand why? Did they offer for us to stay? Last time I checked, Altamir still needs to have a talk. And we don't know when that... They're going to be available to talk to him. Right. That is true, though. If you need to accomplish something, perhaps... Uh, well, if you need me, you know where to find me. I, I'm not exactly sure what your plan succinctly is with this ritual to take this... 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 I guess cultist of sorts down, but um, it seems like quite an abnormal task. Well, we've gathered a lot of information here. It seems pretty straightforward to me, if you ask me. We go find these Indric that can get us through the woods, go to the woods, find the bastard, and kill him. That's That's sort of my plan! That's true, we did... If you're saying this is the same man, we did almost get him once before. Right. But we do have to wait for the solstice, you said, is that uh, Vorian said. Is that correct? How long? Or some kind of solstice? When, when is that? That is a very good question. We're in a library. Now that I have a name for these creatures. And one that I forgot to look at when I was looking at the books that I have, that I was looking at. I'd also like to do information searching on Indrik. You guys spend some more time in the library. Mm -hmm. Uh, You find that Indriks tend to be solitary, uh, but they have been known to gather in small groups every now and again. Um, They are... They don't speak, but from the writings that you find, they are incredibly intelligent, and they are fiercely protective of old, natural places. Um, Aoife, what is it that you're looking up? Um, I was going to look up mentions of this solstice that isn't the solstice. Right. I'll help her with that. Uh, You too begin looking through the books, you do come across the Ephrian prophecy books that he was referring to. Uh, This is all going to take several hours, so it's probably closer to six now. Uh, Mm -hmm. These books say uh, that it is assumed that that it's just after the zenith of summer. So the longest day, it's somewhere in the days around there. Um, you know that the zenith of summer uh, was yesterday. Oh. So, we better be hurrying this up, is what I'm gathering. Yeah. Well, Indrik's probably not going to be the easiest thing to deal with. Highly smart. Mm-hmm. Protective. Yes. And I don't think they're just going to let us waltz up and say, sure, we'll give you a ride through the forest. 
I mean, I'm sure if we talk to them nice enough and explain what we're doing. It's always worth a shot. But I'd rather not get on their bad side. Well, I mean, we could just ask, like she said nicely, and maybe without the pointy teeth. One of the things um. you all do find, in addition about Indrix, is uh, talk of how they came to be. Either the Aedra decided to create something out of the pure essence of nature, and that is what became the Indric, or Aedra that decided to not become part of the Nine or the Eighth Pantheon, uh, instead went into the ancient places, and when they emerged, this is the form that they had taken. Hmm. These sounds. This, these sound like incredibly rare creatures. Hmm? How do you know that we are going to find one on our doorstep? Well, I could follow the tracks. That's sort of what I do. Why would they just be waltzing around the exact area that we were at? I think it's... it is very well... hard for four-legged creatures to waltz. <laughs> You're right, Ragnar. Should have thought of Not that. wrong. Although, come to think of it, I've seen some very graceful bears once upon a time. Um, right, but see, here's the thing, is that I've seen tracks of what is very likely these creatures. I'm fairly good at following tracks. It's, you know, I got a title for that sort of thing. Mm. So if I follow the tracks, we might be able to find what we're looking for to answer your question all on why they might still be in this coincidentally in the same area the impression I'm getting and the information that I have read and rumors on how they came to be highly suggests that they are not of ill intent so they could have been in this area doing some cleanup they're very powerful and capable of handling themselves Seems like a challenging task indeed. Seems intriguing, though. Will you hunt for them tonight or tomorrow, then? Not hunt. Search. Either word works. It's all the same, really. I mean, admittedly, because they can sort of bamf in and out, it does make following tracks a little more difficult. But, um... That's what I meant. Here, Jordan, Walton. remember that that's a thing that is a that will make things different. But um But that to me just says the sooner we look for Tim the better. Fair enough. Well, I'm sure you certainly don't need me to uh do so, so if you need while I wait, don't let me keep you. I could use some help. But, uh, excellent. I don't mind helping either. They sound like very um, interesting creatures. I would like to meet them. I am torn. On one hand, I do very much want to go and assist you in getting your spear back. But as I'm sure you've noticed, I'm not the best at moving stealthily through the woods. And I don't know how much help I would be. More of a hindrance than a help. You have a convincing way with creatures and people, if that helps. But I'm not going to force you one way or the other. You plan on staying here, Alt? I suppose I could come with uh, any, at any time. I just wish to have the answers I needed before letting them out of my sight again. I highly doubt she's going to be leaving her wife anytime soon if they've been a gone and away from each other for months. It might be a good idea to inquire the wait time and then come back. I'd be fine with this. They gotta come up from air at some point. <laughs> Such a way with words, Aoife. Oh, well said. 
Are there servants around? I'm just gonna call you them. go off and find a <laughs> servant. They leave for a bit, they come back. They let you know that if this is something urgent, a conversation could be had now. However, They would prefer a bit more time. You are promised passage into this estate for as long as uh, both Lynn and Dahlia are here. Hmm. Well, uh, I suppose we have no, re- no need to rush them. Hell, I've got the rest of my life to live, in a, in a way. Look, um, yeah. Let's go. I'll help you. Great. We'll see what we can find. Try and track them down. And, you know, come back here. You can have your conversation. Of course. I'm sure they'll be around later. All right. We move out to track the Indrix. E. All right. Aoife, how do you want to go about this? Well, I'll start uh, around, obviously, back where I found the, when I first found the tracks. Okay. Um, I'd like to, uh, hi- well, I'd like to follow them as far as I can up until I don't see any tracks. Okay. And then, um... And then what I would, I don't have any idea like how far they can go. Usually what I know is that they've gone in, like they can cover pretty. Yeah. You're not sure exact distances, but right. You know, they can. Um, I'm, I'm hoping that I would have been able to pick up some sort of scent from them. If I have to activate my path to do that. Go ahead and make a survival check. You got it. Tyrell, how are you helping? physically just looking for tracks mm-hmm. just everywhere i go looking every direction so do it with Wait, did you say survival I oh did. with advantage ragna what are you doing um probably also survival um checking for natural changes in the environment and all that you could do survival well, with- or investigation. If you do survival, it's going to be a disadvantage. Uh, still going to take it because my investigation is so bad. Jeez. Okay. Alt, what are you doing? Um, I'm not going to lie. Alt's pretty much looking forward to bringing up the rear. Um, he's not exactly... He's like getting bugs in his face and he's like, ugh, the outdoors. Don't okay. you have wagons for this or something? Um, Go ahead and make perception then. Okay. And Kat, what are you doing? As I said before, this is not my forte as well. Sure. But um, I think what I'm going to do is I am going to, since they are able to basically jump without like, kind of like kind of like a teleport. I think I want to look for areas that are specifically disturbed out of nowhere. Okay. Uh, you can do um, investigation, or you can do perception or survival, but perception and survival would be at disadvantage. I will do perception at disadvantage. It's a bold um, choice is being made this evening. All right. I had 18. Okay. Literally everything else is super bad, so <laughs> with um, a modifier. No, like, I'll take my plus eight, thanks. <laughs> Alt's got a uh, three. Oof. For okay. my survival roll, I got, and I rolled not as well as I would have liked, um, I got to 26. Okay. I got a 14. Okay. As Aoife is guiding you all, um, Tyrell is kind of helping point out different tracks that come up and different spots. Uh, Aoife is sort of finding the patterns that are going. Cat, as, as Aoife is struggling to find where the next jump may have gone you're finding these weird places these where broken branches suddenly are when there's nothing leading up to it or coming behind it uh or in front of it uh and ragna you are f- 
finding you're finding places where it seems that other animals have run away from very very quickly um, kind of noting helping suss out the different tracks and all you're trying to keep an eye out uh, as best you can but the bugs and just the random branches and it's just frustrating after a bit of travel some careful planning for the group you come across a very large tree uh, alt in your travels you would have seen something like this north of Daggerfall um, the tree comes up like out of the ground the roots actually reach down and there's like space underneath it and as you look down into this it sort of goes down into a, a small little like valley where this tree is you see several animals walking in there with some that are they're covered in maybe not covered but their moss is growing out of them others have these brilliant feathers some have scales some but they all have a common shape they all have the horn on the front they all evoke the similar descriptions you saw in the texts of Indrix. What do you do now? Whomever wants to go first. I, I've seen those types of gnarled roots near Daggerfall and High Rock before, but we don't have animals like that. Those are Indrix. They're not yes. animals. Are they spirits? Are they... I know that we, they... You said that they came from Daedra or... The, Aedra. Aedra or, or the... the uh, what did you say? Spirit of nature? Powerful beings is probably the most accurate description. Do you think you can talk to them? I look to, like, Aoife mostly. I can. I think. I don't know, but... I should be able to. Did they? Did the books say what they understand? What languages? It, it, the, the commentaries written were written in common language, and it just said that they seem to understand speech and communication, but to what degree and what languages is unsure. Tyrell. One thing that you notice is... Is sort of is like oh like I said it goes down into a valley so there's like a rim sort of around it off in the distance there are some large figures not humanoid that seem to be prowling pretty much no one else would have seen them but you're familiar with the ways of the prowler I'm gonna mute myself um <laughs> That's your turn. No, I'm just... <laughs> um, I want to slip off into the shadows and try to circle around and get a closer look. Okay. Let me go ahead and make stealth. Whatever we decide to do and however we decide to approach, <laughs> my advice is not to mess with the nature of this place. They will not be happy. Okay. 37. All right. Uh, what are the rest of you doing? I would never mess with nature, Cat. I know. Not in this way. Oh, um, it seems pretty rude. I think it's just best to be polite. I think so. Would it help if, uh, well, I haven't gotten creative with this in a while, but uh, DM, if someone has a power to magically morph someone into certain creatures, would Altamir be able to attempt to make someone into the form of one of these Indrix? Let me go read the rules of that spell that you are talking about. I assume you're talking about polymorph. Yes. Beast. 
It might not be a bad idea if we want to go the polite route. Based, okay, okay. Just... Uh, Sorry, knowing magic the way you do and having studied these things, based on the description they're talking about, these are beyond the scope of natural beasts, and it would gotcha. not be possible to use this spell. That makes sense. Okay. If we want to go on the way of politeness, I may know my words and how to navigate them, but I am not the most pleasant person to be around. And I think pleasantness is what we need. I think you are very pleasant, Kat. Do not sell yourself short. No, I think Kat is right. Sometimes she can be a bit abrasive. You that was say not it. because I was tall. That was like a... a anyway. You can say <laughs> that I'm a bitch. It's fine. Tyrell. As you are coming up on this area where you saw these figures... Uh, they begin to make a lot more noise. Uh, they're not being as stealthy for some reason. Something spooked them, maybe. I uh, stop moving forward. You see a few of them rush past you. These large bipedal creatures. They seem to have large spikes growing out of their backs and their wrists. They're a, a, almost, you'd, you'd consider it like a very old bone color. It's like off-white yellowish. Uh, you're not sure if they are covered in fur. It seems more like they have like a chitinous shell. Um, their arms are so long that they can like drag the ground as they run on their back legs, but they tend to run on all fours as they move past you. Altamir, Ragna, what are you where, doing? Where are they heading towards where? Where were they heading towards? Uh, back towards where your group is. Altamir, Ragna, what are you two doing? I believe that of this group, the only chance we have of someone negotiating with those of the wild with great prowess and grace, there is a clear answer. I had a glance over at Aoife. Oh, me, I was thinking of Ragna, but okay. <laughs> I was also thinking of Ragna. <laughs> Do you think so? It depends on... If they respect the ferocity of the wilds that Aoife's uh, position may uh, imply, or if Ragnar's true heart will win them over more. Why not both? Well, Why both. not? We could do what we have always done, Aoife. We could do it together. All right, Ragnar. I like that idea. Tyrell, as you're trying to figure together. out what, how to do, can you get back to your group? Maybe it's time to leave your group. Uh, you have a lot of different thoughts pulling through your head. Another set of beasts run by. These ones are familiar. Bigger, though. Maybe a bit stronger. You hear in the distance several howls ring out. And this is where we're going to call tonight's session. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for watching along. Uh, we'll see what this brings. Um, we are not going to be on next week. I have to move, unfortunately, and that takes time. I'm um, not sure I'll be able to set up in a new place fast enough. So we'll be off next week. We'll be back the week after that. So what what do you so I should probably know. Uh, the 7th. So we'll be back on the 7th of August to pick up where this left off. Uh, who wants to go first? I'll go first. Why not? Hi, I am Mare. You can find me on Twitter at Archmage of Dice. Um, you can find me here dealing with this lovely ragtab group of adventures on Sunsets of Summer. On Thursdays, um, actually, it's just next week, we have our finale of Invisible Sun everyone's emotions are gonna get pulled out of her chest and stomped on a lot and it's gonna be great and i'm going to love it um and then after that we will have our fourth watch where you can send questions to daxara or pixel cat um and you can ask us questions about invisible sun uh we will love to answer them 
Tomorrow I have a one shot called uh, In My Homebrew World of Etios, and that is at 1030 Central in the morning. So come join us and watch our lovely group in explore the Forgotten Spire. And my favorite part of this session, I really like the visual of Lynn just burning the shit out of that place. I can go next. Um, hello, my name is Luke. I got the pleasure of playing one very bright and peppy Altamir Baraza tonight. Um, you can find me on Twitter at Dr. Petricor. Um, when I'm not here on Sunsets of Summer, I'm making video game cinematics or writing music and working on a desert campaign. And also, I can finally, uh, well, I haven't put it on the official schedule, but I'm, I have selected players for a one shot in my homebrew campaign of the Lizuku Desert, which will be happening hopefully either August 20th or 27th. Those are Thursdays. And uh, tune in for more details there. I've got some new uh, faces to show off, and I think it's going to be a great time and my first time DMing on the channel. Um, tonight, I think that there is one clear, clear favorite moment um, that went over my heart tonight, and that was the conversation between Ragna and Tyrol. Um, that was all sorts of character development, heavy stories, and just um, really an, an introspection into both characters that blended really well, even though they're complete opposites. So, yeah. I go. Uh, hi, I'm Than. You can find me everywhere on the internet as Than Rand. Um, here on Friday nights with these beautiful people uh, playing Tyrell, who is just a right asshole. Um, and then on Monday nights with uh, Fate's Chosen. And on my own channel, uh, between those days during the week, uh, TV slash Than Rand. Um, my favorite part of tonight, I have to say, was also the Tyrell Ragna conversation because it was, yeah, it was just good. Uh, is that me? I think I know I have to go still. Uh, so hi, I'm Jordan, aka the Lady Dame. Uh, you can find me obviously here on Fridays. Um, playing the bestest of werewolves. Uh, you can also find me occasionally on, well, we're on, we're currently on hiatus, but usually you can find me every other Monday on the Goldheart Gaming Channel in their Descent into Avernus game. Although we are currently, like I said, on hiatus until September. Um, I also stream on my own channel currently Tuesdays and I know it probably says Thursdays on my thing, but Tuesdays and Saturdays on my own channel, super, super late at night for those who need something to watch when they can't fall asleep. Um, I think that's it. Um, you let's see. My favorite part of the of it of the was actually um, Cat and Altamir standing up for Ragna and asking to make sure that she doesn't get in trouble for the deaths of people that she was not involved with. That yes. It oh. <laughs> Also, for my command, guys, it's Lady Dame. I think they did that one first. <laughs> um, hi, I'm Eva. Um, I had the absolute joy of playing Ragna tonight. Um, every week brings a new adventure for my sweet girl. Um, I also stream erratically on my own channel. Um, and can be found much more often over on Twitter. Uh, and sometimes I post cat pictures over on Instagram. So good luck with that. Um, <laughs> uh, my favorite part tonight um, that hasn't already been said because gosh darn it, all the ones that have already been said are so good um, is the character growth and lore drops about my, my sweet boy Bashir. 
We all love Bashir so much. <laughs> Must protect. Hi, I'm Goat. You can find me on the internet, at Twitter specifically, at Mynestro or Goodsex. We're on a hiatus at the moment. Uh, you can also find me here on Fridays doing this thing. You can find me in our Discord. You should join our Discord. It's a lot of fun. We hang out and we chat about various topics, mostly TTRPG related. Uh, my favorite session part of the session tonight was definitely describing the sentinels unto death that are the shadow guest sedges and ragna's constant response being he's a good boy like <laughs> was by far by far the best uh again thank you everybody for tuning in let's talk about our warm fuzzies i got it Woo. all right so for our warm fuzzies tonight we have Bell Chavez! Bell Chavez. Emoji! A Regin Nobel! Okay. We have Christina! Christina! Christina. She knew. That's a new name. That's we a new have Seth! We have Quincy! Quincy! We have Andrew, the Fellowship of the Tables, the Bay of Bay of Bay We've got Gamer Lives with the one and three. Gamer Lives one and three. And we've got Mitch D. Mitch, 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 Mitch,